the Fedora Linux project has, and this is not a joke, has voted to approve a new AI assisted contributions policy, specifically stating that all developers, contributors, testers, etc., may use AI assistance for contributing to Fedora Linux and all Fedora Linux related projects. <laughs> That's right. If you have ever wondered to yourself, what would an AI vibe coded Linux distribution look like? You're about to find out because Fedora is specifically allowing AI vibe coding throughout Fedora, and not just vibe coding, but we're talking AI generated bug reports, the whole works, all of it's allowed now, as long as the person submitting of the whatever the patch is or the contribution is takes personal responsibility for it. So if it, if they're like, yeah, I'm cool with this being AI generated, here's some AI slop uh, Fedora will take it as long as they're open about it <laughs> now now lest you think this is just a a theoretical issue it's worth noting that fedora linux is owned and run by red hat which is owned by ibm and that not just not just through trademarks and whatnot the leadership of fedora is Red Hat employees. In fact, the, the Fedora project leader is an appointed non-elected position that is a Red Hat job. That is someone they hire at Red Hat to run the project. This is actually a pretty common thing among the corporate Linux distributions. Uh, SUSE Linux does something similar where they have open SUSE that they call the community distro, but the leader of the project is literally a SUSE employee who's hired to specifically run the project. Uh, and when you look at the contributors to Fedora, you'll find that a majority of them in most areas throughout the project have a redhat.com email address. They're, they're Red Hat employees. Now, why this is important? Well, uh, let me show you something here. We learned not that long ago that Red Hat employees were specifically told to not only use, but promote AI in their daily work and that their bonuses, their, their yearly and, and uh, half yearly pay bonuses were specifically tied to how well they use, implement and evangelize artificial intelligence in their daily work. It was part of their goals. If they did poorly at implementing and using AI in their day-to-day -day work, they got less money. So they were financially incentivized to spread and promote AI. Well, if you're a Red Hat employee and you're specifically hired to work on Fedora Linux, that means you need Fedora Linux to accept your AI patches, your AI documents, your AI uh, bug reports, all of your, your AI generated art, it all has to be acceptable for Fedora Linux in order for you to get your maximum pay bonuses at Red Hat, right? It kind of, it stands to reason that this was always going to happen once, once Red Hat created their, their internal uh, bonuses is tied to AI usage policy. This was, this was inevitable. And of course, it kind of makes sense. AI, uh, uh, Red Hat is hitching their whole their whole wagon to the AI horse. Uh, here is Matt Hicks from last November, almost a year ago, making a statement. And I'm just going to read this statement to you right now. This is from um, a, a statement they made after uh, Red Hat um, uh, 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 purchasing. Um, Neural Magic, excuse me. Uh, they were purchasing Neural Magic, an AI company, and, and they made the statement that the future of AI is open source. Quote, AI needs to be scalable, trainable, and everywhere. Everywhere? So to be clear, the quote here is, AI needs to be everywhere. 
that's the CEO of Red Hat. So this is this is their corporate vision and strategy is AI everywhere. Now, there are specific business reasons for this. IBM has their AI systems that they license out. And the AI system that Red Hat and Fedora are most heavily promoting is those IBM AI systems. In fact, Fedora, the Fedora project leader, just some months back, listed the primary goals over the next year. And the top primary goal was making Fedora Linux a dominant player in the AI field, was AI related stuff, making Fedora uh, uh, a server side uh, distro that had a specific AI focus, that providing AI features to Fedora Linux in general, AI, AI, AI. And now here we are. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 final change to their uh, Fedora AI assisted contributions policy uh, was was ratified by the Fedora Council uh, just uh, two days ago. It, they are now specifically saying, "All right, let the floodgates open. Get that get your vibe code and ready because Fedora is allowing all contributions from from AI systems." There, there you go. We're going to we're going to see what it looks like. Now, this this brings up a lot of questions because Fedora works with a lot of upstream projects. I mean, not not least of which is things like the Linux kernel and uh, and Gnome and many other projects out there. So what are those projects going to do? in relation to accepting patches from Fedora, who up until now has been an incredibly prominent player when it comes to working with a variety of other open source and free software projects. What are they gonna do? Well, there's already been some discussion around making projects like GNOME far more AI friendly. And GNOME is very heavily influenced by Red Hat. In fact, you'll find that some of the loudest, most prominent voices with inside GNOME, uh, Free Desktop, and many other projects also have redhat.com email addresses. Red Hat has a great deal of power and sway over the free desktop, Wayland, uh, Gnome, and many other projects. So I would expect to see similar AI-assisted contributions policy being allowed at least in some form in many of these other projects in the, in the months ahead. Regardless, we're going to see what a vibe coded fedora looks like in the next couple of releases. So get excited, everybody. Holy heavens. <laughs> We're all doomed. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing this sort of coverage to be possible. Uh, head on over to lunduke.com and click on a whole bunch of links because you love links. And a big shout out, a big thanks to all of the lifetime subscribers to the Lunduke Journal. Absolutely could not do this without you. My apologies. There are several more names that need to be added to this list. I'll get right on that. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, but uh, thank you to everyone who does that. Uh, if you go to lunduke.com and scroll down, you'll find a little lifetime subscription link there. It's a, it's a nice way where you can support the Lunduke Journal and uh, get a lifetime subscription to Locals and Substack and the forum, which gives you access to all the MP4 downloads and the PDF eBooks and forum access and all that sort of thing. It's all up on lunduke.com. Click on a bunch of links and, and you'll see all the details. There's a little perks link down at the bottom that tells you all the goodies you get for being a subscriber and with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes i do declare and broadcast